What's up guys? Jordan from Bennett's Customs. Race car again. Um, getting closer. One step closer. It doesn't look like much at the moment because I've pulled the body off and there's stuff going on everywhere. Um, I've, I've kind of already pre-done a little bit prior to this to make sure that everything was going to work. Um, I needed to dig out a bunch of old dies and stuff for my two bender and that, but um, yeah, kind of managed to be able to make everything work. So on this episode, basically we are going to get the steering sorted, which is a huge part of this. Um, kind of one I haven't been avoiding, but I know that when it was coming to, it was going to be, yeah, a bit of, you know, so there's going to be, a, it's going to be full on. There's, there's a lot to do um, to make sure that it's obviously extremely strong with no flex. Um, and then, you know, I'm adapting in a steering box that's, uh, you know, for something different. So I've had, we've had to reverse it and, um, yeah, obviously make sure everything works for cowl steer. Um, so I'm basically just going to jump right into like, this is a hoop that I have made. I'm going to make another one because I did mess up on the measurement. It's been a while since I've bent a lot of tubing up. I used to do this all the time for four wheel drive stuff, but um, yeah, a little bit rusty at it. Haven't done it in a couple of years. So um, this is basically going to house the steering box um, so that I can, you know, have something strong to mount to. And then this may end up going to the back. I don't know what I'm, what I'm going to do yet as far as like a mini little row cage or a little hoop behind my head, which I think would look quite neat. Um, and, you know, just to you know, keep the, keep the melon intact. Um, yeah, and just kind of have a little one poking out kind of right around there. You know, something, something that would come up through, maybe even through here or just on the inside. Um, haven't quite decided yet, but you know, that'll come with, with the, the shape and we'll, we'll, it'll all evolve. So, yeah, we're gonna get straight into it. We're gonna make up another hoop. We're gonna get the hoop tacked in. We're gonna start making some templates, get the steering box. Uh, mounted, then once the steering box is, you know, relatively where I want it, then we're going to start to make the steering arm, the pitman arm, make sure everything works properly. Then we got the drag link to do. So we, you know, this is a big one. We got lots to tick off on this, so we got to get into it. Make sure you guys like and subscribe, hit notifications, and um, yeah, I really hope you guys enjoy this video. kind of talk talk as I go with this one um, basically what I have set up is my old um, JD square bender that I've had for yonks um, I've bent up several roll cages bumpers sliders um, X members for hot rods like oh yeah this thing has been through the ringer um, hence the Hence how beat up it is and everything's a bit twisted. It, um, it does work. Uh, unfortunately, I've lost a lot of my dies from, from here in Canada. I don't know how it's possible, but it's happened. Um, and what I'm using is 38 mil, three mil um, precision tubing, um, also used for um, speedway applications. Usually I would use inch and three quarter or 44 mil or 44.5 mil ERW or, you know, like DOM tubing or something like that when I would do certain things. Um, is, that's also kind of what I was actually looking for prior to getting this tubing today is I wanted inch and three quarter because I do have a really nice inch and three quarter die. But I do have a 38 mil or inch and a half um, die in here, but I do not have 
the the backing for it i only have the inch and three quarter one so i've done a few test pulls and it is working so i'm just going to use it anyways but it'll do the trick but i've also damaged the degree wheel that's usually on this as well which is a huge pain in the butt because i'm kind of running blind but what i've done is once i get a nail in 90 degree which is kind of all i'm bending at the moment um I'll just use a bit of welding wire and kind of attach it to this bolt and I'll just hang it out somewhere where, where uh, you know, I know that it's, that it's um, 90 degrees or a true, true 90 degrees. Usually, you know, it's way nicer to have everything fit perfect the first time, but we're just, we're just working with what we got, which is kind of the, the regular thing said around here at, at this point in the build. So. Yeah, so if you're not familiar with this, this is just a, a, a JD squared type bender. Um, it works really well. It's a pull through style, so it's not like a pipe bender where it kind of kinks the material. It actually, it, it draws it through and you actually bend this side. Yeah, so they, you can get them with all sorts of different stuff. Sometimes they have you know, a hydraulic setup, which eventually I will purchase. So I'm not having to do this every time. It's also nice to have the newer units that don't have the, it's called like anti spring back. And basically what's that doing is every time you bend it, it wants to just slightly come back because you know, that steel's got a bit of a memory. So if it's not pushed all the way, it'll want to kind of slightly come back, but it's uh, yeah. You just gotta get a nice big long bar on it. You get lots of leverage. And then all we're doing, you know, I've just mocked up the cowl set up and, and measured, you know, the, the frame rails and made sure I knew exactly where it was gonna sit. I've done a test piece. The test piece came out really well, but I just screwed up my measurement. So that's totally fair. Luckily I can use that still for um you know a couple gussets and that sometimes even putting grease on the back of the tube is really nice to do as well just helps it slide through the guide so it doesn't want to grab anything and flatten it out but we're just going to continue doing this until we get that 90 and i'll pop it out We got the bar bent and tacked into place. Now I'm trying to situate where the steering box is gonna go forward to back. Um, I obviously want it to be center. Um, and so we need to make some sort of bracket that holds both of it so I can pivot it to know where to put the steering wheel. I've made a cardboard template. Basically that's gonna bolt on a hole saw and area out for the, to, for the output shaft to slide straight through. And then that top bit will actually be cut out all the way around and it'll allow me to have a full weld on the pipe. So once this is welded or cut, I'll be able to slide this up over it and then I can pivot it back and forth and 
kind of get it in the sweet spot where we want it. Once that's fitted, then we need to work on the actual shaft extension to get it outside of the cowl um, and, you know, to have the pitman arm on the end. So we'll get this cut out. I'll drill some holes and then we'll fit this onto the box, slide it up over onto the main hoop, and then we'll see what it looks like. All right, <clears throat> so that was our cardboard template. Transferred it onto some 10 mil steel. Yep, bit excessive, but I'm hoping I can just get away with one bracket on here like that. So what I'm gonna do is just bolt this on. We're gonna slide this up over the tube and then we're gonna let this sit, square it up, see what it looks like. Fingers crossed, my plan works. Basically, I'm just gonna lift this end up if I can. Hopefully this will pass the bend. Ooh, yep. Oh yeah. Have a look at it. That's bloody perfect. So essentially I could like use vice grips and actually hold this into place where I want. Let's just try it. Oh, I'm digging this. This is, this is awesome. And if I can kind of roughly gauge where that's kind of centerish, I don't know if this will work, but I'll just try it. I'm just hoping I can kind of pinch it and then get it up into, into place where we want it. Okay, so we had 470 mil off the top of the intake, right about there. Pinch this, that should kind of stay. All right. So we're at 460, it's okay. Um, roughly 275. And if I put the steering shaft back in, 555, where we want to be. Oh, bloody brilliant. Okay, so basically what I did was, I'll just pull this off. Thread is welded in, rosette welded, four spots all the way around. Um, and that is like press fit in there. That goes on to the end of the output shaft for the steering box. Um, and that's the piece that was from the pitman arm. And then that's welded into the pipe. And then I've just milled this down in order to fit right against there, nice and tight. And I will kind of, we, we're, we haven't finished this part yet. So that part will be done afterwards. But 
basically what the idea is, kind of the game plan. Um, I need, I think that's got to go on that side. Um, but what I've done is, you know, that plate that you just watched me cut out, now that's right around, which is really nice, so you can get a full pass on either side. This is just kind of swaying in the wind, but we know where it's supposed to go roughly, try and get that center. I know the pitch down to the torque tube up to the center here, I know where that's supposed to be. And we've just kind of locked out with the pillow block. What I did was I actually welded in the, the bolts. So now there's nothing on this backside so I can actually get pretty close on the um, side of the pipe. So what's gonna happen? That's gonna bolt on like that. Long bolt will go down with the nut, fix it on and then the pitman arm will get um, fixed onto here. And then the pillow block is purely there for support, which we need. And this is pretty heavy duty. Like I'm using 10 mil steel and eight mil here, massive pillow block, like, but I also just want absolute zero flex with this setup. So what, what you know, there's gonna be a lot that are gonna go into here. So this is gonna have to obviously get fixed down to the frame as I had mentioned with those other pieces. Um, so what we're going to do now is get this square centered, square this way, square that way, make sure everything's level and, and all that and then we will tack this on, tack it here and then I'll just bring the TIG welder over and we'll just do a few passes on everything making sure it's nice and tight. Um, we'll stick the steering wheel back on, just mock up with this pipe that we have and then we'll put the body back on, have a bit of a look at it, make sure everything's centered where it should be. Um, and then we can keep moving forward into creating more, more of the parts of, of the steering. So we're, uh, we're really getting somewhere um, with this, which I'm super excited. So let's get this measured up and tacked into place. So I've measured up off the frame in from the cowl where I know the front of the cowl sits. I've got my center for where the steering is going to come out. I'm using a 51 mil inside diameter punch that I use for my um, dimple dies. And that will just allow me to have, um, you know, it's, it's a 40 mil outside diameter pipe. So I have a little bit of play around there just to make sure I know everything's going to be in the right spot. I'm just going to use a step drill and just drill it out till I get my, the size of the shaft. And then we'll put that through and make a nice clean cut. All right. So put the nail on there, slide this through. So that's 
that's what it looks like. Obviously, this will be way different. I'll um, end up making a plug that'll go straight in there and on the end of the plug, which will be way closer to the cowl. Um, we'll have the, the Pittman arm swinging off the bottom. But it, um, yeah, looks really nice, especially from this way. Just spin you around and show you in here. So we got the drop down bracket, which picks up the steering box. 10 mil, I'll probably make a little piece across here just to tighten it up. Maybe even one on the other side. Don't want any flexing in this. And then that just goes straight through the pillow block. It's got nice support, really close to the cowl, which is great. And then on this side, it comes through. And we just did that nice little 10 mil hole all the way around. So it's got, and I'll, I might even just put a little dimple in this and then we will end up probably covering it with something. But for now, um, I think that'll just be totally fine. So what I'm gonna do now is throw the steering wheel in and um, I'm just gonna jump in there and make sure everything fits. So that is sort of what it's going to sit like. Um, yes, the wheel does seem like it sits high. The wheel I will be using is probably about that much shorter. So basically the width of the grip in. Um, so it, it won't actually look that bad at the front. And still haven't figured out what I'm going to do here yet. Um, but I don't mind it. I like the angle of it. I feel like it matches the edge of the cowl quite well, which is nice, so yeah. It's starting to actually look like something now with a steering wheel. Sweet, so as you just saw through that time lapse, basically I just put this beam in 
all this is doing is helping this not flex. Um, I don't think I need one on this side. It is so sturdy. Like it's, it's almost a bit overkill, but that's kind of how I do a lot of stuff is a bit over engineer it for some reason. I think it's because when I used to build four wheel drives and stuff, it was just that beefier the better. So, you know, it's, uh, it should hold and, and do everything it needs to do. Um, Basically, I'll just like, I've done a few passes, I'll finish welding it after everything's out, but it's, it's exactly where I need it to be. And luckily, Chris um, came down on the weekend. Thank you so much, Chris, for your um, volunteered help. He came down for a day and a half and just helped me kind of do everything. And he had a few of these steering boxes, so he has actually made all this stuff. And basically, it's so nice to be able to use this because I can kind of just stick the steering wheel on I can bring this in, slide the clip down, and then, you know, I have like a, I can just set the height of where I want everything. So then when I go to use the original one off this box, I can cut it exactly to that length. So it's really nice to have that. But that's like, you know, Pitman arm, finish welding. Um, and then I will probably end up trying to tie this into something else. I'm not sure if I'll make another hoop directly beside it right here. I haven't got that far yet. So what I'm gonna do now is just quickly throw a dimple die in the side of the body, and then we're just gonna plunk the body back on, make sure it still fits over this really nicely with everything in there, and I'll just jump in and see the steering wheel placement. So let's do that now. All right, so there is my dimple die, and basically all I'm doing, I don't even, I'll probably end up making a blister that'll cover all this anyways, but adding a little dimple to it just you know adds definitely a lot of structure to it as well so I'm just gonna slide this through making sure I have it the right way I will slide the shaft through hopefully not to distort the metal too much little dimple on there. Nice. I'll cut this off most likely. Um, man, it would be nice to just even mill that out and just slide it on over and weld it. Make it look like it's totally factory. That's what we're trying to achieve. For the steering, it will sit obviously a little bit closer and then I'll end up doing a little bit of a dip with this drag link to make sure that it is parallel with the frame. You always want your drag links to be parallel. So that'll go like that. That'll travel all the way to the front, bolt on. I'll just cut this, we'll sleeve it and um, rebuild both ends. Got some a rebuild kit for them both. So. That's gonna be it, cow steer, all day long, baby. And then, that's totally gonna to be in the way for all the extractors. So, that sucks. So I've just, now, now that I've just said that, I gotta redo it all. So what I'll end up having to do, because our pipes are gonna come out and swoop up this way, I think what I'll end up doing is maybe dropping this down slightly, or I may even just make one. I may even just make a new arm and just cut this off and weld the ball on. Another day, same race car. Um, this morning's goal is to try and get this lower steering bar, crossover bar. Yeah, so obviously this steering bar, it's really nice where it sits. It's got clearance from there, but barely has any clearance underneath the frame. And when I stand on here, this hits. So I need to move this. So there was a few different options. I was just gonna flip it and have it out the front, but I really didn't like the look of that. I really like the look of just seeing the front axle. So what I'm gonna do is cut these, extend them and drop this down here. It's not a road registered vehicle, so it's okay. It's just going around a dirt track. So I'm totally happy with heating these up. I'll just 
put tons of amperage in. I'll turn up the welder, crank it, get lots of heat into it. I'll probably just drop these in some uh, bucket of lime or something afterwards just to let them cool down longer so it, you know, it holds that heat in. First things first is we got to just pull this, the, the um, ends out so we can get this out and then we're just going to do some measurements, make sure we still get these in the same kind of situ as where they are now, but just lower. So as you can see, we need to probably bring it down about that much. So yeah, let's get, let's get it done. All right, here's my crazy idea. I didn't really want to like cut and add sections and have two welds on the steering. So I know that I can manipulate and heat these up and it's totally fine to do so. So I'm going to do that. This is a left hand drive top steering arm for a Model A. I'm going to cut this off right here and then I'm going to mount this like that. So then I can heat this up, twist it out and twist that ball around. So it'll just be heating and manipulating. No welding, no welding necess necessary. I say that now, let's hope this works. But yeah, I think that'll work. So essentially what I'm going to do, I'm going to I'll heat it up, I'll open this, and then I'll twist the ball, and then it should just mount in, you know? Okay, so essentially there's two flat spots on this, which was lucky because this would usually sit up this way. So now I have it down, it's underneath. I'll kind of uh, spin you around on this side so you can see it a little bit better. So this is kind of what I'm working with. So why not heat this up and pull this down and we're gonna be right in the, right in the zone, right where we want to be. Unbelievable.
Well, there she is. Down, it is gonna mount upside down, but I'm totally happy with that. Lots of room underneath the split wishbone. It is, yeah, it just turned out really, really well. Just put a rim on there just to test it. But as you can see, it looks really, really good. So now I have a right-hand drive steering arm, drag link crossover, tire, and I'm gonna, this is just set up this way because I'm pulling on the vise that way, but basically this is gonna spin down all the way, and then I'm gonna match this one to that profile. And then what's gonna happen is if I spin you, come with me, this, I'll be able to twist up and lift up and that will actually be my drag link. So I haven't cut anything yet, which is really cool. Who knows if it's gonna work, I don't, but I'm just gonna try it and see. So let's straighten this one out, make it the exact same as that one over there. And then we'll put this one on the left-hand drive spindle and we'll see if anything's gonna line up with the cow steering. So this is kind of where we're at. Basically it drops down, the ball faces directly down, and then this clips up on top like that. Um, so those are actually sideways. So that's your flat spot where they would usually sit on right there. And I've filed this side so they actually sit slightly different. But that drops down, dead parallel all the way to the other side. Everything is square, distance-wise. And then this one's pretty neat. This is, you know, this is your standard. Basically, that would be here. And this one was actually your steering. So I've used two steering arms as the cross, the crossover. And I've used the steering arm uh, or the crossover arm story as the as the pickup for the drag link. Now I don't exactly know if this is going to work properly. What I've done is I've definitely centered it as far as on here. Um, so I'm hoping that by doing that, like when you want to steer to the right, it's pulling it and there's enough pull, and when you want to steer to the left, it's pushing it and there's enough push. So. I'm not entirely sure if this is going to work out properly or not. Basically what I need to do is try and design the drag link now and figure out what's going to work and what's not going to work. Stock, Model A, Pitman arm. I was originally going to use this, but I can't anymore because of this, what I'm doing. So anyways, 
There's going to be a plug that's going to go in here on the end of the plug will be a pitman arm. Essentially, it'll look something like this. That will turn. I'll have a bent down drag link and it'll go to our new steering arm. Hopefully, this is set up over here is going to work. Unsure. But anyway, so what I'm going to do right now, I've just cut a ball off another one. I know you can buy these, yes, that are threaded, but I've just cut one off. I've just thrown it in the lathe, trued it up. I've just trimmed off the side. So now I can slide this into a hole and I'll weld both sides. That would be sufficient enough. And right now I'm going to design a pitman arm, cut it out of some 10 mil steel, probably add another piece of 15 mil on the outside to really strengthen it up and weld it. And then maybe I'll put some silicon bronze in there and blend it all, make it look somewhat vintage. Um, so I'm going to do that now. So underneath this, we have our hole, that's our um, side steer side or cowl steering where the shaft comes through and then down here we have this hole which I've just put this on the lathe so that was just a ball off of an old Model A steering arm I just cut it off threw it in the lathe turned it down and that will slide in there and I will weld on both sides extremely strong so I'm going to stick this piece of cardboard down, clamp it on, and I'm going to trace around it with the plasma cutter. And I did do this a little bit more narrow than the finished product, obviously, because you need to compensate for the size of your tip. Now I ran out of consumables and I only have these big large ones. So I've had to measure right across, which is nearly four and a half mil from the center to the edge. So. I've taken that off this so that when I come around I'll still have a lot of meat on this side to weld to and down here we'll still have a lot as well. So we're going to clamp this on and get this cut out. Cut out. Nice piece. 10 mil steel. Cleaned all the edges up. So we've gone from a cardboard template to that. Got my little ball I've just cleaned up. So that's just gonna drop straight in there. And then I'll weld that in. And then basically I may even just put like a nice little piece in here or something too, just to strengthen it up slightly.
So after a little bit of sanding and blending, which I've shown on previous videos, basically just your roll lock wheel. If you cut them in a square and leave them like this, they don't take so much off and they're very good for blending, especially where I've put this silicon bronze in here. But what I was just trying to do is just fatten it up a little bit. So now we have 15 mil where it actually mounts and then it kind of comes down. I've done the exact same width diameter, 50 mil apart, just with a couple rivets. Um, looks pretty medieval, but I'm hoping once it's painted and on there, it'll really kind of suit the suit what we're trying to do. So now I'm just gonna get this, plop that in there and weld it. And this is a job done on this one. That's kind of what we've come up with. So, pitman arm, I just welded in the ball. Backside's welded as well, so that should be strong enough. Put a fair bit of amperage in there. And that is going to go on a slug that'll slide into the steering, and that will pivot. It's 220 mil from the center to center, and that's 50 mil longer than the original Model A one, so hopefully that'll do the trick. So I'll finish making this spacer and then I'll end up probably welding this. And what's gonna happen is this is gonna be removable so that the body can come off, put on, and that this slides in with a pin. And that will be my steering. So now, because we are running the headers down the side, that's why I also really wanted this to be super low profile because I want the headers to not have to stick out, you know, a mile off the body. It would look goofy. And I don't want to have to alter this side to the other side. So I know that whatever I do on this side, I can just flip it for the other side. Um, and, you know, the, the spacing will be the exact same. So what I am going to do, this is the stock drag link that was off the Model A. And I've just cut it. What I'm gonna do is put a piece of tubing over top of this that slides over. I'll rosette weld it again. I will probably cut it a bit on an angle as well and maybe do some kind of, I don't know, maybe something neat, who knows. I'll probably just end up button it right up and just welding it because we are running out of time. So what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna measure off the top of the axle to here, making sure I get everything level. You always want your drag link to be level or running with the frame and the wishbone. The top of the wishbone is level as well. The frame is level, so it'd be nice to get this level as well. So, what's gonna happen is I am going to um, measure to the ball, making sure I have everything correct to the height that I need. Then we're gonna level this off I'm going to measure the height down to the floor. I'll read, you know, subtract the difference. And then what's going to happen is I'll heat it with the torch. I'll bend it down and then bend it down again. So it'll have a little kind of kick up, similar to the kick up right here in the body. And then this will follow down and then we will add the tubing onto it. And that will carry to the rest all the way to the um, ball on the axle. So making that, you know, once this is down here, there's ample amount of clearance for the headers to come out, twist, and go all the way to the back. So we are gonna start to measure this up now. We'll write down some numbers and get this thing bent up. Okay, so here we have the drag link. This is what I just made. This is a wire buck or uh, this would actually essentially be called a buck. This is just a template. And what I did is I went off this, which funny enough, the distance that we have to lower this is 90 mil. The distance of this is 90 mil. So what I did is I drew it out. Here's my template. This is 90 mil 
difference, we've made this. So now I have something to work off of to bend this. So I'm going to grab the torch, we're going to throw this in the bender, I'm going to get this all square. This is level right now, so I'll make sure everything stays true. And then we will um, heat that area up, we'll bend it, and we'll heat this area up, and then bend that area. And then, essentially, we should be close enough to the 90 mil that we need in order to dog leg down to get it to run parallel with the frame. So, let's do it. old drag link that I used just temporarily to get the size right. Unfortunately last night obviously no steel joint was open and I didn't have the material so it's early morning I'm just waiting for him to open so I can run down and get a piece so I can weld it in but this is kind of what we're after. Runs really nice and parallel everything's equal even this way which is really cool so I've made it, you know, follows the wishbone in, and then I'll kind of dog leg this a little bit so that this is parallel with the body. That'll basically kind of sit something like that. Nice and tight to the body. So, you know, there's not a whole lot of interference when it comes to be building the extractors. The step thing was kind of a coincidence. I don't know if you can kind of see, that's the step in the body line. And this is actually the exact same, 45 degrees, 90 mil dropout, same as that. So it kind of just, yeah, little, little steps all the way down. While we wait for this piece from the steel joint, I've just measured this. This is like a kind of a makeshift little column piece that Chris has made for his box as well. And he's just cut like an old piece and made a flange so that you can kind of put it in and you can play with the little adjuster and then you can get your column height set. So I've measured, that's where I like it. It's where it fits comfortable. And what I've done is that was the original column just like this and I've taken out the difference so now I'm left with these two pieces that's 300 mil it's exactly what I need so I'm just gonna stick it on here get this welded up and then um, we'll do the inside track Okay, so this is the nut that goes onto the end of um, the output shaft for the pitman arm. Unfortunately, the tubing that I've chosen that, that extends it is too small diameter inside. So I won't be able to, this is just an example, but I won't be able to fit it in there. And the socket is an inch and an eighth, which is way too big to try and get down there, even if I mill it down. So I was just thinking about how I can get this all the way down through here to lock up inside here. And I was just gonna build, you know, like try and mill down a socket or something. Then I was just looking through a bunch of old sockets I have and I found this old spark plug socket. Now, 
this will work perfect. It fits 21 inch or a 21 mil socket on the end of it. Um, and what I've done is I've just popped it through the lathe just to clean it off and just put the line bore on the inside. And I just cleaned up the edge of this and faced it. So now I can stick these together. I'll press this in. I will weld this all the way around and this will be the piece that will live on the end of the nut and that'll just stay in there. And then if I need to, I can get a nice small socket right down there with an extension to remove it. Perfect. wanted to show you kind of how I did the side steer. Um, there's a million different options but this is just kind of what I came up with with the materials that I had. Um, first of all that knot worked out really really well. Um, basically this is going to live off the end of the steering box. So steering box, knot that goes on it but the problem was basically an inch and an eighth socket was huge and it wouldn't fit down the inside diameter of this tubing so I would have to mill it down and unfortunately by the time I milled it down there was only like I think it was 0.6 of a mil um, on the edges where where your edges um, of the bolt were. So it wasn't gonna work. Um, so I had this old spark plug socket laying around and I have a huge tub of old sockets and spanners I cut up and use all the time. So I just milled it down. I milled the bit of this down so they fit true to each other um, and then was able to just weld it around. So now I can just get a small socket that slides straight down there and that attaches it to this. So I'm really, really stoked that that worked. Having said that, this goes in, slides in, tightens down. Now, I do want to be able to remove the body. The body is gonna be similar to what it is in the state now. I'll steal it out a little bit more and finish it off, but I do want to be able to pull the body off and then basically it has a what would you like you know I can get to the whole frame and I want everything to run I want all the electrics I want everything to be there and I just want to be able to take the shell of the body off just in case it's super nice to be able to work on it without the body on so if there's any issues I can just take them off and it's totally fine so what I did I took a solid bar this was 39 mil outside diameter which was kind of a weird size for this it's not bright steel um, which would have been nice to use. Bright steel doesn't, I don't know, maybe I've just personally not had the best time with welding it, but I just had this and what I did is, um, yeah, this is all set up for exactly what I need for the pillow block. And I didn't like the thickness of this. It is two point something mil probably thick enough to just be able to stick this straight on there and weld it but I just didn't like that I want it to be really solid um, with steering I don't want to have any issues with it so what I did was I went over to um, my mate Damo's place thank you Damo for letting me use your lathe it is the best lathe ever this slides in should should go in a little bit more Maybe I haven't done it right. But anyways, that should slide right into there. This is going to be removable. You take this, this is going to be welded to this. So that's going to be welded to it. And this piece is going to slide out. So this is going to be sticking out the side of the cowl, just barely. This is going to slide in on the side of the cowl. Then we're just going to drill a hole all the way through this and put a 12 mil high tensile bolt, which I have here somewhere. 
that's just gonna that's i mean and yeah there is probably a little bit of pressure on that bolt but that's okay it's it's totally fun it's just a forward back motion i just want this to be really strong and it's it's heavy and i'm adding a bit of weight but i want it with the steering i don't care i want to over engineer it probably could have done this so many different ways but i just used what i had to make it work and you know obviously the time frame is going to be a little bit tricky so this is what happens this bolts in this can be all one unit i made sure everything was mounted off this side so this whole unit can come in slides up to the plate this slides through the pillow block the pillow block by fluke literally the flange touches this which is awesome so even if this were to fall out which it won't happen it's unlikely but in the case that it did fall out it can't go anywhere because it's going to be stopped by this but if there's no bolt holding these splines in that pillow block flange that's against here with the grub screws is actually holding this in there so no matter what this cannot come out you will not lose your steering unless everything catastrophically blew up um, then yeah I would lose it so this is the steps this goes on this slides down tightens up with our long little fancy wrench that I'll make that will have a little holder and stay in the car at all times so I don't lose it like what people do with their fancy wheel nuts with those locking wheel nuts and they forgot to put them in their glove box then this is going to slide down that's going to go on it that's going to be welded to that then you're going to steer this this is going to steer the tires are going to move and i'm going to be doing super fun things in the dust done let's weld it in there's a knock at the door but don't freeze in your tracks it's the chance that you've been waiting for it's the light coming through the Pitman arm, tacked to the shaft, everything squared up. I've tested it, it's where it's supposed to sit. Um, yeah, and basically I'm just gonna weld this on, flip it over, weld the backside, and this bit is done. We're just letting the drag link cool down. I just had to tweak it slightly. Um, that's just gonna be tacked into place for now so we know exactly um, where everything's gonna sit. And uh, we'll get back onto that bit. So let's just weld this up. Boom, boom, that knock on your door It's sounding further away Don't lose out like those times before This is now today
So that is how much I took out of the steering column. Basically nearly half. And then what I did was I just put it in a jig as you saw. I welded it up. Same with the inside shaft, um, the actual worm gear on the end. This was shortened as well. And then I've cut and put it on the lathe. I've drilled out the inside and tapped it for an M, M12 point uh, by 1.25 fine thread, high tensile bolt. And basically what's gonna happen is I still need to put a keyway in this to match the inside of the Model T. It's got the keyway. But what's gonna happen, keyway, I'll put a, I'll put a nylon bushing in here to help this um, as well from going back, back and forth. But it'll be relatively tight to there as well. And then that'll press on on the keyway and then I'll do just something similar to this. I'll probably put this nut in the lathe and kind of, you know, make it look nice. But essentially, once this is on and press fit, so it'll be something, something like that. Everything's nice and square. And I'm just gonna put the nut in the steering box. So, all right, let's see if it works. Oh, wow, it's so smooth. Ha <laughs> ha Definitely gotta put steering stops in. Sorry. Oh, Austin awesome Powers. And then it's just gonna be one of these. Drop the clutch. <laughs> well, I'd say that that's a wrap. Obviously a little bit of fine tuning we gotta do. I do still have to make the little nylon bushing that's gonna sit inside the column to hold the shaft, just to support it. Um, a little bit of the footage, obviously I didn't film when I was on the lathe for quite a few hours making the slug that attached to the, the um, pitman arm itself. So this actually slides all the way into the shaft and that nut, it kind of holds that nut in there. I've measured it exactly. So it's well over engineered, but it is steering. It's super important. I want to make sure that it is completely fail safe. So I'm really happy with the way it's turned out. It's super comfortable. I feel, yeah, like I feel like it was in a perfect kind of area. My elbows still have lots of room. It feels sweet. I just, yeah, can't wait to get it on the ground and actually see how it steers. But yeah, pretty happy. And it was also really cool to do those Model A front um, spindles or steering arms. Like there was no welding or cutting necessary. Like I twisted them heat them up with the torch, manipulated them to where I needed them. Luckily, I had like a box of them that were right hand and left hand drive because I actually had to use both to make it work. Anyways, that was a really good video. That's a, that was a big one from kind of start to finish. The steering was a huge part of this. Um, and I'm really happy that it's kind of box ticked. So on the next episode will be the fuel tank. I'll get that mounted. Once that's mounted, I'll just kind of fluff around a bit with the body, making sure everything's square. And then it's on to the clutch, the um, gas pedal and the brake pedal, which is going to be a little bit interesting. Um, that'll be, yeah, definitely a lot more machining on the lathe and trying to get stuff to pivot correctly in the right balance for how it works. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that video and learned something from it. Um, let me know what you think in the comments as well. Um, I'm sure there's probably a thousand different ways of how to do this, but it's a way we did it and it worked out really well. So I'm super happy. Please like and subscribe, hit that notifications button. So you, um, you know, when we got the next video coming out, which will be in another five days. Also, just want to give, I know I'll give quite a few shout outs, but um, I want to give a shout out to the man behind the lens, the man that edits and does all the filming. Ben is basically the, the other half of this and um, yeah, he's always hard at work making sure he gets everything edited well, choosing all the good music that everyone likes. 
Um, and we may have a secret for something that you guys comment on the wall a lot lately, but we lighten it up soon. So, <laughs> and we got a new one too. That's Ben's Ben's purchase up here. We got a got another um, beautiful figure uh, up there, and um, I got some gold flake uh, still in a pot. Um, and I think what we're gonna do is end up. Um, gold flaking the entire thing on another video and then I'm going to get my mate Lewis Cromley when he comes down um, next time he's going to bring his brushes and I'm going to get him to uh, pinstripe that thing and just make another little piece for the for the workshop so you know you got to be able to walk into your workshop and enjoy looking around and seeing all the cool yeah, so we're, and also lots of you guys have um, always asked about the music and we have started to put the music down in the description so if you guys enjoy any of the music that we are putting in the videos, um, just have a look at the bottom and yeah, you'll basically have a link to be able to find it all. So that's a wrap. I'll just be sitting in here soaking in the tub. It's got steering. And then it's gonna have all the other cool stuff.